Thank God for the blood. I don't know why I'm so nervous about this message today. I've been here 25 years and you'd think by now that I'd get over my nervousness. But this is the word of God and any time you handle the word of God, it ought to make you a little bit nervous. Open your Bibles to the 17th Psalm. The 17th division of the book of Psalms. I'm going to read just one verse out of Psalm 17, and that's the very last verse, verse 15. Now I want to speak to you out of a phrase that's found in this verse. Psalms is an easy book to find, about middle ways of your Bible. And you found chapter 17, say amen. amen. All right, look at verse 15. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. I want to speak to you today on the subject in his likeness. Now, I don't know exactly when this psalm was written. We know that it is a prayer, more or less, that David is praying to the Lord and talking to the Lord about some things. But David is much like you and I. Seemed like every time he turned around, he found himself in trouble. There wasn't armies marching against his kingdom. There was all kinds of trouble in his kingdom. It looked like those things hunted David out and just aggravated him all the time. We see an insight to that in verse 1 where he cries unto the Lord. Now, it's important that we notice that. It may not be that he shed tears, but he cried from his heart to the Lord. He made his petition known to the Lord. He needed some help. He was in trouble, and trouble was all around him, and he cried unto the Lord. I remember several years ago when Our daughter Anna was just a little thing and we got a bunch of these little things in our church and you parents will relate to this. And when she was real little, I'd be sitting in the chair reading the paper or something and she'd say, Daddy, Daddy, watch me. And she'd tumble over. Now to her, that was a big thing. To me, it didn't mean nothing. I went on, I said, honey, that's good. I go on back to reading the paper. And in a few minutes, she'd say, Daddy, Daddy, watch me, watch me. And she'd roll over. Now to her, that was a big thing. But to me, it wasn't nothing. that I'd say, that's good, honey. I'd go on back to reading the paper. But after a while, her playing around in front of me, she'd go off in another room. And she'd holler, Daddy, down went that paper in the floor. That sound, Daddy, wasn't the same sound, Daddy, that while she was in in there in the front room with me, something was going on, and I was going to jump up and run in there and help her and get her out of whatever trouble she was in. Now, if you and I as parents do that, Think about what God does when his children who are getting in trouble call up on him. He's going to drop everything that he's doing and answer their cry. And he did to David. David said, it's so bad sometimes that I just want God to build a hedge around me that nothing can get to me. God does that. He did that for Job, remember? The devil said, I can't get to him because you've got a hedge around him. God does build hedges around us 
when we need those hedges that the devil cannot get through and bother us, it'll do us good every once in a while to cry unto the Lord when we're having trouble. Notice that phrase David said in verse 15, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Now, my problem is with reading this and studying this, and it wasn't really a problem, but I got to thinking about when David said that. He said that hundreds of years before Jesus was born as a babe in Bethlehem. Hundreds of years before he ever went to Calvary. Hundreds of years before he ever hung on an old rugged cross. And yet David somehow knew that there was going to come a time when he would take on the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now David died before Jesus was ever crucified. David had been buried long enough for his body to go back to the earth from whence it came. And yet David declares in this verse that there will come a time when he'll be completely satisfied and that's when he takes on the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's talking about when he gets to heaven. Amen. Hundreds of years before Christ died, was buried, and rose again and gave us the great plan of salvation. David trusted the Lord before the Lord ever did anything for him. Now that's amazing to me. You and I have the privilege of looking back through the pages of the Bible to hundreds of years ago when he did die for us and we have proof that he died for us and proof that he was buried and proof that he rose again, you and I ought to have in our hearts and down in our souls the realization that one day we'll have his likeness like David said he would. Turn to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, I believe it is. Yes, it is. Genesis chapter, we're going to turn to several verse chapter verses. You don't have to turn. I, I think I can turn there for us. But you can find this one real early. It's the first page in your Bible. Verse 26. God said, let us make man in our image. Watch this. After our likeness. Now you say, preacher, what does that mean? That means God was going to make man in the image and in the likeness of God himself. He was not going to be God, but he's going to have the likeness of God. Follow me? All right. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And God created man in his own image, in the image of God created him, male and female created he him. When Adam was created from the dust of the earth, He had the same standing as God did. Now, does that surprise you? Let me explain. He was without sin. So was God. He was without fault. So was God. Amen made in the image and in the likeness. Well, after a while, after he named the animals and 
did all the things that he did, uh, God decided that he needed a help meet. So he caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Man was made from the dust of the earth. Woman was made from the rib of a man. Isn't that interesting? But the Bible says that when man dies, he'll go back to the dust of the earth. I wonder if a woman dies, does she go back to a rib? No, she'll go back to the dust of the earth too. But he caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and made him a helpmeet and called her woman. But in this verse that I read to you in Genesis, it said that God created him and her in the image and in the likeness of God. That means they walked and talked in the Garden of Eden with no sin. They were as pure as God was pure. They were as sinless as God was. They were as happy as God was. Now they were not God, but they were made in the image and in the likeness of God. If you had looked at them, you could have got a glimpse of God himself. That's the way they were made. But something happened in the Garden of Eden. The old devil appeared. And I don't care how good you try to live, you're going to face him as well. I don't care how holy you think you are, there's going to come a time when you're going to meet the devil face to face. And if you're not careful, you'll yield to him just like Eve did and Adam did. God said you can do anything in this garden that you want, eat of all the trees, but the tree of life in the midst of the garden, you don't eat. For in the day you eat it, you'll die. When the devil appears on the scene, the first thing he does is tell a lie. He calls God a liar. Yes, he does. The devil said, when you eat of it, you shall not surely die. And Eve looked at it and said, boy, that looks good. Boy, that looks delicious. I don't know what kind of fruit it was, and you don't either. Some say apples. Some say oranges. Could have been a banana. Who knows? But it was a fruit they were not to eat of. But he partook of it, gave to her husband, and he did eat. Now listen, if the prettiest woman in the world, men, was to give you something to eat, you'd take it too. Amen. And he took it. And that plunged mankind into sin. They were naked, the Bible said, and were not ashamed. After sin appeared, the first thing they'd done was hunt some fig leaves to sew together to cover up their nakedness. And the next thing they did, when God came down to talk to them, they hid themselves so God couldn't find them. Sin entered into that garden. And man, listen to me, and man who was made in the likeness of God became a polluted sinner and lost, lost that likeness that God gave them. And when a person is born into this world this day and time, that's the nature they were born with, born with a sinful nature. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Man lost that likeness and lost that image of God. I'm here to tell you, just one bite of sin will destroy you. That's all it took for Adam. Just one bite and the soul become polluted. I'm looking at folks in this audience 
that's the reality of what one body will do. These glasses that everybody wears, including myself, boy, when I take them off, we got a crowd. I put them back on, it gets slim. These glasses are a testament of the sin that man created in the Garden of Eden when he disobeyed God. The back aches we have. The arthritis that we have. The flu that we catch. The cancer that goes around. TB, anything else. Any kind of a disease came about because man lost the image and lost the likeness of God in the Garden of Eden when man sinned. But that's not the end of the story, thank God. Let me turn over to the book of Philippians. Read you a couple of verses in chapter 2, verse 6, 7, and 8. Who, that's Jesus, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, made himself of no reputation, watch this, and took up on him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God hath highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus did on the cross of Calvary what I could not do for myself and when I bowed and accepted Christ as my Savior, I got the likeness of Christ back. Amen. You ever thought about that? Now, I'm not much to look at, that's for sure. Adam was made without a blemish. And Eve was too. Now I'm saved because Jesus went to Calvary and gave his life, was buried and rose again. I'm saved. But I still got the same body. But on the inside of this body, I've got somebody who lives, who is in the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He took up his abode in my life when I got saved and he's going to stay right there until I die or Jesus calls me home. I live in the likeness of the Lord Jesus. And it don't mean I'm perfect and it don't mean that I don't do some things that I shouldn't do but thank God since I got saved I didn't do I don't do some of the things I used to do and I don't talk like I used to do. I'm a new man in the Lord Jesus Christ. Though I still make human mistakes, I inside of me lives a new man that is in the likeness of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Made in the likeness, lost that likeness, and we get that likeness back when we go to Calvary. But that don't end at all. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of First John. Let me find it. Well, I got it wrote down. First John chapter 3. Y'all can find it about the same time I do. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Let's just read verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. That's Calvary. 
that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Now watch this. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, listen to this, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. One of these old days, the doctor's going to say, there's not anything else I can do for you. The family's called in. If I live long enough, I'm going to leave this old body here on the earth. My wife probably will have it cremated. That don't make any difference to me. Not a bit. That's the cheapest way to go, by the way. But if you're afraid of the fire, hey, listen, the only fire I'll ever feel is the fire that I feel in my heart for the Lord Jesus. She'll probably have me cremated. That's the cheapest way. And my dust We'll be putting one of them little old jars that you can set on the mantle, put my picture beside of it, and all of that sort of stuff. Some of you have plans like that. It won't make any difference to me whether I go that way or whether they bury me in a pine box somewhere in a cemetery. Doesn't make any difference. Before they can ever get to my body, I'll have another body that is in the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A body like unto his body, like him in his image. What I lost in Adam, I'm going to get back in the Lord Jesus. And all the battles that I face here with the Holy Spirit helping me, one day it'll all become a reality. I'll be in the likeness of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you have that hope? If a person dies without Christ, they have no hope. All they can look forward to is a place called the lake of fire. Amen. And I sure don't want to go there. I want to go to heaven by the grace of God and I intend to. In his likeness. I don't know, I have no earthly idea how David thought and how he found out that there was coming a time when he would be in his likeness. The New Testament hadn't been written. All he had was the law, but he had the Spirit of God speaking to him and talking to him and letting him know that there will come a day when he will awake in the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And the New Testament tells us we will too by the grace of God. There'll be no more sickness, be no more arthritis, be no more cancer, be nothing that hurts. Like the choir saying, we won't have to worry anymore. Amen. I'll never have to pay another broad river electric bill Hallelujah. You might be on Duke. We'll put them out of business. Amen. When Jesus comes, there won't be enough Christians left to power the plant. All you people that's left are going to have to pay the bills of everybody that's left here by the grace of God. Or you'll be in darkness, one of the two. But there won't be any of this stuff that we go through now because the Bible says all the former things are passed away and everything becomes brand new. When I awake in his likeness, what a day that's going to be. Let's stand across the building.